Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to today's show. My name is Mayback, and uh, we have a uh, in line today a very good uh, show where we're talking about the sabotage of a father. So it's basically based on the story of Colin and his son, uh, Colt Gray. And uh, this is the case we'll be looking at today. So the story of Colin and Colt Gray is more than a tragic case of violence. And I'm sure we all know what happened this week. And it's, uh, to say the least, it's uh, the worst thing uh, to, to, to witness. And uh, when it happens over and over again, it becomes a very brutal uh, lesson in what happens when a father's idea of bonding uh, turns into reckless encouragement of dangerous behavior. Because uh, Colin was a father who was continuously encouraging Colt uh, towards the path of dangerous behavior. Um, because as a father, there are things you're supposed to do. And as a father, there are things you're not supposed to do, especially around your kids. This isn't just about physical presence in a child's life, but what a father instills is in, in his child's mind, heart, then builds the worldview of that kid. Colin Gray handed his son not only a gun, but a warped idea of manhood, where strength equaled firepower and control meant destruction. It's a very sad state to, to be in as a kid. It is a, a case of misguided love from a father because Colin wasn't an absentee father. Far from it. I mean, he was there, but his version of fatherhood reads like a playbook on how to raise a time bomb. Instead of nurturing Colt's emotional intelligence, uh, which all fathers should be doing, Colin opted for a more extreme approach, gifting his son an AR-15 uh style rifle just months after the FBI flagged Colt for making online threats to shut the, to go uh, shooting out uh, a school. This wasn't just a misstep, you know, it was lethal endorsement of his son's darkest impulses. Imagine that Christmas morning, other kids are opening and wrapping their video games and bicycles as gifts while Colt is unwrapping a tool, a gun, he would then use later to tear lives apart. This wasn't bonding, it was sabotage. Colin was a sabotage of a fire. We've got to stop treating these acts as isolated incidents of mental illness or bad seeds. You know, I hear all the time people talking about this is a syndrome no, far from it. This is a learned behavior taught by a father who modeled the wrong lessons. You know, Court received a gift, a gun, but he did not receive any responsibility. Well, so Court's gun became a gift but responsibility wasn't. Let's not miss words. Colin didn't just give his son a gun. He gave him permission. Permission to channel his anger and confusion into violence. Permission to prioritize power over peace. When you hand a weapon to a kid who is already struggling with social isolation, behavioral issues, and online threats, you're not being a mentor. You're becoming an accomplice. And thoughtfully so, because now Colin has been charged with the same or even more charges than his son. And let's take it further. After the FBI initial investigation, how does a father think, you know what? What my son needs is a rifle. How does a father, a responsible father, think like that? Only a sabotage of a father can think like that. That's not just negligence. It's outright denial. It's turning a blind, a blind eye to the signs flashing in neon lights. And we need to talk about guns. Yes, I agree. But we need to talk more about fathers. It's easy to say that gun culture is to blame. But let's get it real. Colt didn't learn to hate or threaten from a firearm. 
The firearm didn't teach him that. He learned it from his environment, from the validation he got at home. Guns are tools, yes, but fathers are teachers. And Colin taught his son uh, that might makes right. We need to shift that narrative. The question isn't just how this kid got a gun, but why his father thought he deserved one in the first place. This is where fatherhood and masculinity collide in the most dangerous way. We've got fathers raising sons in a society that tells them men must be stoic, invulnerable, and forceful. Instead of teaching them that boys have to navigate their feelings, how to deal with rejection or anger, how to build responsibility. Too many fathers are teaching their kids to swallow issues down their throats and arm themselves for the fight. It is crazy. Colin didn't just buy his son a gun. He handed him a loaded sense of en entitlement. This kid was walking around thinking he could end the life of anybody. He took his kid for hunting. Uh, what would you call them? Escapades. And then when this kid killed uh, a deer, he made the kid pause with the deer. Made the kid taste the blood of the deer. And he was busy praising the kid for the kill. And also calling the kid bro. Unimaginable, outlandish methods of bonding that are way too dangerous for a child. Guns don't raise killers. Fathers do. It is the crux of the argument. It's not a gun lobby issue at its core. It's a family issue. And you know what? You're not bonding with your son if the only thing you're teaching him is how to pull a trigger. This is the job at the notion that uh, a father-son bonding through destructive means, driving home the importance of responsibility and constructive fatherhood, it's all the agenda we should be having. We cannot have a situation where distraction is the center of our bonds. That if we are not talking about how we killed, then we are not talking. If we are not bonding over how we got a shot right, then we are not bonding. When a father's idea of discipline is an AR-15, don't be shocked when his son's idea of power is massacre. The dark reality of Colin's decisions and the subsequent outcome makes clear the fault where the fault lies. Fathers like Colin Gray are the anomalies. They are symptoms of larger societal failure to redefine masculinity and fatherhood. If we want to stop the next court gray from pulling the trigger, then we need fathers to start leading by example, teaching empathy, not dominance, responsibility, not rage. Fathers need emotional intelligence, training. And if they cannot humble themselves enough to bring themselves to a training of that sort, then make it widely available everywhere they turn so they can educate themselves at their own time. We need to stop pretending that tough love means zero affection and all discipline and you must save the world. We need to teach our fathers to listen, to talk and respond to their children without relying on extreme forms of bonding to talk or to teach. It is crazy what this father became or how he even thought his medals were. It's interesting. The FBI visit was a major red flag, and yet nothing substantive, substantive was done afterward. There needs to be a stricter protocol where threat made by a minor leads to mandatory interventions, not just by the law enforcement, 
but by the psychological services. Fathers should be part of this process, understanding the brevity of their child's actions and not thinking they need an AR-15. And they need to be held accountable for providing a stable environment afterwards that this kid will change their ways and become better. We need better uh, monitoring of what our kids are doing. We need to be close to them. We need to assess them more. It is, and also we need to, to shift our cultural understanding on gun ownership and gun use, especially in America. Guns in America are often treated as symbols of freedom and masculinity. What we need is a shift in that narrative. Guns are serious responsibilities, not toys or status symbols. Fatherhood should mean teaching your child how to build a better world, not to arm themselves against it. To put your child in prison at Cole's age is worse than to help your child understand how to live in this world as a better man. Legal consequences for reckless parenting should be the first thing. Colin Gray has been charged with involuntary manslaughter and rights rightfully so. But we need more than reactive legal action. We need laws that hold parents accountable for enabling or encouraging violent tendencies in their children. Irresponsible fatherhood should be illegal. Where it's through irresponsible gun ownership, violent rhetoric, or blatant neglect of warning signs, these things should be taken more seriously. The story of Coat Gray should haunt every father in the world, not because it's rare, but because it's becoming too common. Fathers, you're not just providers. You are the architects of your child's worldview. You can either build a world where they know how to handle their emotions, their struggles, and yes, yet even uh, their anger, or you can build a world where they think power lies in a gun barrel. Choose wisely. The future is literally depending on it. We'll be back after the break.